today we're going to look at ways to express sets. Let's start by talking about elements of sets. Objects belonging to sets are called elements. We use this symbol, kind of looks like an E, for an element, and we use the same symbol that looks like an E with a slash mark through it to say something's not an element. So let's look at an example. Here I have 3 as an element of the set 1, 2, 3, because I can see 3 is in the set. But when I look at 4, it's not an element of the set 1, 2, 3, because I don't see a 4 in the set. So let's take a quick example for you to try. Um, I have two things said here. I said Nevada is an element of the set A, and then I have Las Vegas is an element of the set A. But before that, I said A is a set of states in the United States. So I want you to decide true or false for each of these. So hopefully you said true for Nevada is an element of the set A because Nevada is um, a state in the United States. But we, when we look at Las Vegas, we need to say false because Las Vegas is a city, not a state. So same kind of idea. I want you to say true or false for these three examples. Um, give yourself a second. You can pause this if you want to, and then we can come back and see how you did. All right, so let's go one at a time. The first one says 8 is an element of the set 2, 4, 6. This dot, 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 um, called ellipsis, it just says continue in this pattern. So 2, 4, 6, the next one would be 8. So I can see that 8, yes, is an element of this set. So I say that's true. Then I have 1 is an element of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, yes, that's true. So what we really want to carefully look at is the difference between our second example and our third example. In the second example, I have just the number 1. And in the next example, I have set brackets around the number one. Now, I don't want to do that. That makes this one actually false because there are no set brackets when I look over at the set one, two, three, four, five. So because I have this problem around the number, we have to say false. And what I would need, if you can see here what I wrote, if we had um, the set one is an element of the set that has the set one, then two, three, four, five, that would be true. This is a little tricky. It just says really pay attention to notation. And when we're going through this, later we'll introduce something called a subset as well, and we should come back and kind of talk about this one more time. But just pay attention to, I'm just looking for, is the element part of the set? And um, pay attention to brackets, because they do make a difference. All right. So we want to talk about different ways to write sets, because I've written them a couple different ways, and we probably didn't even notice there was a difference, so let's just point it out. So we have three types of ways we can express a set. Um, word description, roster, which is also called listing method in some books, and then set builder notation. So we're going to start with word description. Word description is a written explanation of the elements in a set. Look at an example. I can have A as a set of natural numbers less than 10, so just words to describe the set. B is a set of months that start with the letter J. C is a set of counties in Nevada with a population over 1 million. So each of these times, I didn't write any of the elements. I just told you what they would be. Okay. So I'm going to take these three sets again, A, B, and C, and I'm going to change the um, kind of no um, notation or description to the roster or listing notation. So roster notation just lists the elements in a set, so I'm going to tell you exactly what they are and I'm going to write them out. So I'm going to go back to A, and this time it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So those were the natural numbers less than 10. This time I wrote them out. B, remember last time I said it was the set of um, months in a year that started with the letter J, but this time I wrote them out. I listed it's January, June, July. And then C, I said, um, was the counties in Nevada that had a population of over a million. But this time, I'm just writing it out that it's Clark County. There's only one. Okay. So this third type of notation we have is called set builder notation. Now this one's a bit different and it can be a little tricky, um, so I'll give you more examples of this one. But set builder notation gives instructions on how to create the set. So I'm just going to do like a construction. So let's look at an example. So A, back to those three that I did for word and roster, would be the set of all x where x is a natural number less than 10. Feels kind of like word description, because you can see the words written out. The difference is I wrote the set brackets, 
and I put this X to say, hey, I'm building the set. I'm building it with X's, but then I have this line that separates what I'm doing from how the X is built. So let's look at it again. Um, B is a set of X, where X is a month that starts with the letter J. And then C, X, um, I have the set of all X, where X is a county in Nevada with a population of over a million. So I just wanted to point out again that this vertical line, we read it as such that, and it separates the element X from the condition needed to satisfy the set's construction. So let's look at that a little more. As we go through and talk about sets, we're going to come about that we always have either a finite or infinite set. Um, Finite means there's a countable number of elements in the set. So I can say there's two or there's ten. Even if there's a million, it's countable. I know how many there are. If the number of elements in the set is not countable, then we call it the set infinite. Um, set builder notation is often really helpful when trying to write elements of an infinite set. We're also going to find it's really helpful when we use equations to build a set. So just so we can say, like, what does that look like? Um, here's a few examples. Say I wanted to build a set that's just positive multiples of the number 5. So I want to have 5, 10, 15. So, and that would keep going. So that's what it looks like if I was in um, rostry notation. But in set builder notation, I would say the set of all 5x. So that way that 5 is in there to say I'm going to multiply by 5. And the condition I need to give is not x is a natural number. That way I know to do 5 times 1 and 5 times 2 and 5 times 3. So this is an infinite set. It's big, but I gave you rules for developing it. Um, it will always be important to kind of tell me that number, and that way I know if it's positive, if it's um, negative, if it has fractions. So you want to give me some indication of what kind of number you're using. There may be times that you decide to use whole numbers instead of natural. That's fine. You just give me the condition so that I know if there's decimals or not. So let's look at some more um, set builder notation examples. Let's write this set in roster notation. So I have a is the set of 5x plus 4, where x is a whole number less than 7. So I'm currently in set builder notation, and I really want to see what these elements are, so we're going to work it out. Now we want to start by just thinking about x. So it says x is a whole number, which means now we're going to start at 0. Um, it says less than 7, so we're going to stop at 6. So x is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to plug that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 into 5x plus 4. So that's what I did here in these lines. I did 5 times 0 plus 4. That was equal to 4. 5 times 1 plus 4 is 9. 5 times 2 plus 4 is 14. 5 times 3 plus 4 is 19. 5 times 4 plus 4 is 24. 5 times 5 plus 4 is 29. And 5 times 6 plus 4 is 34. This is how I would do it when you're doing your homework or any other assignment you're doing too. I would write it out. I don't try to do things in my head. I really do try to write them out just like I'm writing a hair for you. After I have all the elements written out, I can put them together in a set because the answer needs to be a set. So my set is 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, 29, and 34. Okay. So there's where I used some kind of formula and the creation of a set and set builder was really helpful. All right. So Again, I'm giving you some things that I really want you to try. So it says pause me, try to do these. There's going to be more than one answer um, as you're writing this in word description because we all speak a little differently. So do your best. Look at your answer, then look at my answer. And if you feel like they're equivalent, then good. If not, look at the di little differences and see how you would tweak it um, next time. All right. So hopefully you paused me, you wrote down your answers, and now we're looking together. So the first one, A, equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, if I want to describe that in words, I could say this is A is a set of natural numbers less than 6. Um, you could have also said A is a set of whole numbers between 0 and 6. You could have said it's the set of um, natural numbers less than or equal to 5. You could have said the set of whole numbers greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 5. Like There are choices. I like that about math. It doesn't have to be exactly just one way. So as long as you somehow gave me a word like natural whole integer, you're in good shape, and that way you gave me that constraint. So I know to start at 1, I know to stop at 5. All right, B. B says winter, summer, spring, fall. So I would say that's a set of seasons. You could say a set of seasons in a year, whatever you want. Just say a set of, you know, that the set of seasons is in there. And then C, I had 2, 4, 6, 8. So 
I could say C is a set of even natural numbers. You could say um, it's a set of even whole numbers, or you could say the set of even positive integers. With integers, you do need to say positive, so I'm thinking T46 and I'm not thinking any negatives. So same thing, um, I want you to try these where you write them in roster notation. Again, pause, pause the video. I feel like you should get used to this throughout our course that you're gonna pause me, do the work, and then come back and check to see how you're doing. All right, so let's check. So A said the set of days of the week. So we want to write out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Order doesn't matter. So if he started with Monday, awesome. Just to make sure you have all seven days. Um, you can abbreviate, I'll follow you. All right, B. B says 7x, where x is an integer, and negative 2 is greater than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. So right here, you should be thinking my numbers are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I have to multiply those numbers by 7. So you can see negative 2 times 7, there's my negative 14. Negative 1 times 7, there's negative 7. 0 times 7 is zero, or is 0, 1 times 7 is 7, and 2 times 7 is 14. So even though I didn't write it all out for you, I still want you writing down what are my x's, what happens when I multiply them, and then gathering your set at the end. Same thing happens with c. I gave you the set of 6x minus 2, where x is an integer between 2 and 5. Okay. Between 2 and 5, look at this here, it says, remember, this doesn't include 2 or 5. So... Um, I'm not doing 2, I'm not doing 5. The only numbers between 2 and 5 that are integers are 3 and 4. So that's lucky because that's not a lot of work. So I have 6 times 3 um, and then minus 2. So 18 minus 2 is 16. Then I have 6 times 4 minus 2. So that's 24 minus 2 is 22. So that's where I got these two elements, 16 and 22. Um, so three more. I have A, B, and C, and this time I want you to write them in set builder notation. So again, you got to do that little set of all X and tell me what the X um, stands for. So try those, pause me, come back, let's see what we did. So let's look at A. So A, again, I wrote a couple different ways here for you. Could be the set of all X, where X is a natural number between 4 and 10. Um, you could also say a whole number or an integer, that would work too. And I chose to use the word between on this one, so I went one lower and one higher. If I didn't want to say that, I could say A is a set of all X where X is a natural number, and X is greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 9. Again, you could say a whole number or integer as well. Just make sure you get used to that idea of telling me what kind of number you have and then telling me where to start and stop. All right. B, North America, South America, Africa, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Antarctica. Antarctica um, would be the set of all x where x is a continent. Luckily for this type, this feels a lot like word description. You just have to remember to use that set of all x thing. It's just a notation, but we're going to do like whatever it says, that's what we're going to do. Okay, C, I have this 4, 8, 12. So hopefully you see this is multiples of 4. Really important that because it's multiples, when you write out your set, you write a multiple. You do four times x, so it's not four plus x. Four plus x would be like one plus four is five and two plus four is six, right? And it would be every number. So you have to do the multiplication for it to really jump like that. So I have four x, and I said x is a natural number. That works because natural numbers start at one, so I have one times four, two times four, three times four. If you want to say a whole number or an integer, then you need to tell me that it's going to start at 1. So you say x is greater than 0 or x is greater than or equal to 1. So